So let's, let's get right into creating this list um, <coughs> of what is the difference between reality and illusion. So I'm just going to start off putting some things about reality, and we're going to talk about that. And as I write these things about what reality is, then I'll spend a little time explaining the illusion, but I'm going to focus on the reality just for a little bit so that you'll see how these things kind of follow a pattern. So reality starts off with God is, period. That has to be what we get really comfortable is reality. And then we need to understand a little bit more about what God is. God is mind, which is consciousness. So God is, it is mind, it is consciousness. When you think about mind and consciousness, uh, allow that to be intelligence. Because that's what you, we want to begin to understand. God is, and it is an intelligent mind. It is a creative mind. And because all that there is is God, it is one. So we got to get comfortable that there's nothing else. There is only God. God is. And in its oneness, it is absolutely whole. There is nothing missing. It is all-encompassing. It is totally and completely whole. The other things that we need to understand, that which is one can only be one thing, and it is love, because in its, in its vastness, it contains everything in, inside of it. So that which is whole is also the essence of love. So as we start looking at what is reality this way, that it is God, that it is mind, it is intelligent, it is one, it is whole, and it is love, then we can begin to understand how the illusion got created. So the way to understand the illusion is we need to come down here and understand love. So love, being what everything is, is something that just being love is, is okay but being love and receiving love is better. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when this presence that is love decides to create, and the Course is very clear, it creates one son. Now you can, you can switch that to it creates one child if you want to, but I'm gonna use the terminology that, that the Course uses and it creates one son. In your mind, switch it to child, switch it to daughter, whatever works for you, but God, only needs one to give and receive love. That's it. So if you think about that, you know, we are usually with one partner because the giving and receiving happens two or, when two are gathered, there is love. So inside of that understanding, the infinite source of love creates one son. So, so here God is all of these wonderful things and it creates a son. The son, the child, the essence that God creates to give and receive love to, is loved unconditionally. No conditions whatsoever, because in wholeness, in oneness, there is no need for conditions. Inside of that unconditional love, this son can decide to think for itself. Why? Because it has use of the mind. So this son experiencing itself as no longer one but two-ness, it sees itself as other than God, it begins to experience itself as separate. And believing itself as separate, it begins to experience fear. Are you with me so far? Yeah. So I'm gonna write this down. Um, let me see what word did I use? Yeah, okay.
And the reason I want you to follow this is because I want you to understand that love is what created us. Does that, that make sense? So love creates us and it loves us so much that it allows us to use mind freely. That's what free will is. You can use the creative mind freely. You can do whatever you want to do with it. When we use it to create duality and to see ourselves as separate and other than God, we then begin to develop an ego. And the ego is nothing more than a thought system. It is using the thoughts that can be thought, but it, when, we, when we're operating from our ego, it is a thought system that denies what we are. Does that make sense? So, huh? Well, so when you deny that you are love, you experience fear. When you deny that you're one with God, you think you're separate and experience yourself as other. So when we are looking and thinking that we are other um, than God, it creates a contraction. So what is one and, and whole now appears to have a hole in it. So let me do a design. So I want you to use your imagination and the circle that I'm going to create, imagine that that is God. So God being everything, inside of everything, there is an idea because the Course says that we are ideas in the mind of God. So in this infinite mind, there is an idea to create the Son, to create the one that is going to be giving and receiving God's love. So. When God creates this one sun, within itself, this one sun says, oh, I'm other than what you are. And because it doesn't acknowledge that it is one with God, it thinks itself to be separate, it believes that it has a whole, right there. And the idea that I am separate from God is what creates the sense of fear. Remember, we, we, one of the obstacles, we have a fear of God. So the fear that gets created is that I am hiding, I am denying what God is. D does that make sense? And again, depending on where you are in your journey, this will make sense. If, if this does not make sense, don't make yourself wrong. Just recognize that there are more steps on your journey before you can get to the place that that will make sense. Because the spiritual journey is a bridge like we talked about last week the spiritual journey is a bridge we left god one thought at a time we 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 return to god one thought at a time it's just like grades in school you cannot have a first grader understand the the complexity of a math problem when you're in in college however you can give that first grader the same letters and numbers that 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 person in in a, a, a phd in college is going to be using they're going to be the same letters and numbers these are going to be using a b c d the, the PhD is going to be using the same letters, you know, X, Y, and Z. We're going to be using the same numbers in first grade. You're going to be using the same numbers in your PhD program. How you combine them and what you do with them will be different. And that is learned in every single grade that you go through until you get to the point that then that PhD stuff makes sense. Th does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, you know, this is real, a, you know, 12 steps up. There's two kinds of fear. There's like, okay, the, the lions chase after me, I better get the hell out of here, that's good fear. And then there's the fear like, oh my God, I, I'm not gonna make my money, you know, or whatever. So there's really, there's, there's like the men, mentally generated fear, and then there's like the real, the stuff that, you know, that you need to take care of and you're gonna, you know, perish. So how does the course explain that? So free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. Mm -hmm. The course says fear is unreal. So there are no two kinds of fear. There is no good fear and bad fear. So depending on where we are on the journey, it is helpful to divide it up that way. But at some point, we have to let go of all fear because if there's not a body, what would be good fear for? Because good fear to, to preserve the body means that then we have fear of the body. So this is one of those things that we are going to have to understand what this is saying and use it to the best of our ability wherever we are. And because this is a journey, it is a bridge. The Course is a course in miracles. 
Miracles is a shift in perception. We're gonna shift our perception one step at a time. And the, the benefit of dividing fear into good and bad fear is necessary when we are in the beginning stages, what I'm gonna call the halfway part of the journey. That is when we're becoming self-aware, it's really crucial, but for awakening, it, it's not helpful. So just keep that in, in the back of your mind. And if, you're, if you have a resistance to that, know that you're just resisting truth. You're not ready to come out of that circle. The circle has not expanded. There are so many tools, and I'm sure every single one of you on your spiritual journey have used tools that made a lot of sense in the beginning, and then you put those down and you picked up another tool. Have some of you had those experiences? One book really helped, and then you went on to the next book. This question is a wonderful, powerful question because the course is really, really clear. We cannot, we cannot come up with things that are not what is stated in the course, otherwise we're creating our own curriculum. And when we do that, guess what the ego just tricked us into doing? Not, not being able to follow the path that will wake us up. But that, that's such an important thing to keep that in mind. Um, so, the ego then begins to take what is one and begins to divide it. That's what duality is about. There's me and there's you. And it begins to, to turn everything into otherness. What I want you to understand about love, what I want you to understand about consciousness and mind is that it is just energy. So I've got my two different markers going. And we have a brilliant person who accessed more of the mind of God, and he gave us a wonderful formula that says, basically, E. Do you guys know what E equals MC squared means? So energy is the same thing as the mass that we see. It's the same thing as the mass that, that you know, travels uh, through a certain speed, and because of light, we can see it. So energy that we are appears as mass, appears as bodies. This is where our bodies are nothing more than energy that we are seeing. Quantum fixes, physics is teaching us that. Are you guys comfortable with that? That you are energy? Now let me tell you why this is so important. Very offensive to the ego that wants to be a body. Very offensive. The Course in Miracles is, uh, you know, it's a course in mind training, but it's a course in ego offending. Yeah. And we've got to get comfortable with that because as we're reading the course, we are going to get a lot of resistance. When you're, you feel like your stomach contract, when you feel one of these uh, kind of a fight or flight anger, that is your ego in action. It is so important that you begin to understand that because that contraction is because you're using the mind with the ego to direct the energy to contract. Does that make sense? What we are, what we are is the energy of love. The energy of love is energy that is supposed to be in motion. Why is it in motion? Because energy, God, what God is, is infinite. There is no end to what God is. It is absolutely infinite because it is infinite. It is eternal and that's what life is. If you study Hinduism, you will study, I mean this is four or five thousand years ago, these people were, were having experiences of what we are and they know that what we are is eternal. In Hinduism are the teachings of reincarnation. And the reason they, they, they teach reincarnation is because they have come to experience the truth of who they are. And when you come to know what you are, you know that you're not finite. You know that you're not what you've been taught to believe. So when we operate in reality, we know our eternalness, we know that we're infinite, and we know that we are life. When we operate from our ego,
So when we're operating from our ego, we take what is infinite and we think we are finite. This is me. This is me. This little circle, that circle is who I am. My body is who I am. When we believe we're finite, then we're operating inside of what, instead of being eternal life, becomes temporal. That means of time. So we have a birth and a death and we have an expiration date. So when you begin to understand that this is what the ego has done to us, thinking with the ego, using God's mind to think of ourselves as separate, we have created a thought system that has us believe that all we are is like that, that saying says, a dash, the space between birth and death. If you believe that that's what you are, guess what that is? A block to the truth of your eternalness. If you believe you're a body, that is a block to the truth that you are energy. Does that make sense? If you believe the fear in your mind, that is a block to the awareness of infinite intelligence that could help you work through what is happening. So back to that question about good fear and bad fear, when we're operating at the level of human form, we have access to infinite intelligence. Wouldn't it be better to begin to shift that statement about good fear versus bad fear into, let me just receive guidance. That's what we need to begin to understand. Fear actually becomes a block and it's a paralyzing block. And you know, that's why they say when you go into fear, it's fight or flight. You can't resolve anything when you're fighting or flighting. But if you receive guidance, the guidance might tell you, go ahead and move on. But when you receive guidance, and you follow that guidance, guess what you're doing? You are giving authority to something that can see the whole picture where you in your finite way can only see this one location. And if you're trying to fight or flight and you can't see what's around the corner, but infinite mind can and you block that, that guidance, you might put yourself in even more danger. But if you receive the guidance, guess what you are doing? Remember those four obstacles that I told you about earlier? Guess which one you're not gonna feel. If you listen to guidance, you're not gonna feel guilt. So we begin to dissolve guilt because now we're beginning to go to God. God, what would you have me do? So when you begin to listen to that guidance, and we all have that intuition, but when we're studying the Course in Miracles and we're told to go to the Holy Spirit to hear what God has to say because the Holy Spirit in the Course is the voice for God, which is intuition in us. It's our use of mind, but it's our use of mind by listening to mind, not making up our own mind. Do you see how different that is?